I'll use it. I'll use this. Okay. Use that. All right. Well, we, we can, can have an argument. argument. We're going to start at the same time? No, let's start first. Okay. <laughs> as long as I get the last word. By the way, all that stuff you did for a PhD thesis, it's yeah. been proved wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like many. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks, thanks for coming, for everyone. everyone. Uh, very nice uh, evening. Uh, it's a great, great pleasure to introduce Mark Potashny here, who uh, he was my PhD advisor for all, practically all of the 1980s. But um, so Mark is at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York now, but he only went there around 2000. Uh, before that, he had a long and famous career at Harvard University. He first went there as a PhD student around 1961, and uh, did a PhD with Matt Meselson in the department where Jim Watson was uh, then a professor. And um, <clears throat> so Mark worked on bacterial genetics and then as a postdoc more or less, he began to uh, purify a lambda repressor at the same time that Walter Gilbert purified lac repressor. So he worked on that for the next 30 years or till now essentially. So he's famous for doing that, being the first person to show up protein binds DNA sequence specifically, so beginning the world at sequence specific gene regulator proteins and uh, proving the Jacob Mano model and all that. Um, <clears throat> so by the time I came to Boston, he was thinking about eukaryotes and I began work on ESCAL4 and we worked on that. And Mark went on with that after 1990. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's it, Mark will tell you all the rest. Uh, <laughs> he is what the Germans call my doctorvater, which means he's my doctor father. And uh, Mary said that my mother and Mark are the only people who consistently drive me crazy. Actually, I'm here to officially reject his PhD, which is, turns out was given in mistake. Can I be heard? Does anybody care? No. So, uh, let's see. I had to think of something to talk about. So, um, I'm going to tell you that when you go from bacteria to eukaryotes, the logic of gene expression changes in what seems like a subtle way. In bacteria, we have, and don't worry if this is not completely clear right now, it'll be even less clear later. No, it'll, we have activators, so-called, and repressors, Whereas in eukaryotes, we have activators only, plus things called inhibitors. Now, that may seem like a small difference, but I think you'll agree by the end of the talk that that's what makes fancy life possible. And more amusing, perhaps, is that the way we get there to the eukaryotic thing is by thinking hard about every principle we learn from the study of bacteria. And then you'll see. Uh, one of my favorite sayings about science Yes, Karl Popper, you know, yes. Okay, so way, way back when, before a lot of you were born, back around the time of Mendel, actually, uh, I was in uh, graduate school when um, the French, the great French Jacobin Minot, uh, said one of the things you ought to study if you want to know about development and evolution and so on is this virus lambda. Why? Well, well, Lambda, Lambda has, has the ability, ability to, to squirt its DNA, DNA into, into a bacterium, bacterium and then and the genes, genes turn, turn off. off. I'll come back, back to what else that happens, but basically turn off. off. And, and it, it turns, turns out, out that, that there, there was, was and by the way, you'll notice at every step, nothing, nothing would be possible, possible without genetics. genetics. And in that, in that sense, sense, Mendel is our, our guide, guide, if we, we stay away from hackweed and things like that. So, uh, the French showed that there was one gene, and only one gene, that, was, that when you mutated it would prevent this turnoff phenomenon. And that gene was called, therefore, the lambda repressor. And so there became this huge commotion. There was an analogous set of experiments with LAC, which I won't talk about. And the big uh, uh, brouhaha was, what is the repressor and how does it work? So, so, of course, of course the, the most popular, popular guess, guess, including by Jacob and Minot, by the way, is that, that it was RNA, because RNA can take a protein to a particular, can recognize a 
particular, we're, we're always, always talking, talking about specific, specific DNA, DNA binding, binding and that's, that's absolutely critical. critical. It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter if something, something just binds DNA. DNA. The, question the question is, can it pick out a sequence so that it can tell which gene to regulate? Fundamental problem. And of course, and I'll show you later that actually this trick works. If this RNA is part of a CRISPR system, and if the proper modifications are made to Cas9, I assume you have doesn't matter, matter if you, if you don't, don't, but anyway, anyway that, that works. works. It's never it's used in nature for reasons I don't, I don't really understand. understand. We could talk so about maybe. So, so it, it turned, turned out that, that no, no, it wasn't RNA. RNA. In, in fact, fact, it was, it was just, just a simple, simple protein. protein. Small, Small it had, it has, has two, two blobs, uh, and, and that, that thing is supposed to be responsible for turning off essentially 40 genes in the phage when it's in a lysogen. Now, now, it turns, it turns out, out, I didn't know it at the time, but Francis Crick wrote an article that was published in Nature, in, Nature um, in which he said, this thing can't possibly bind to double-stranded DNA for two reasons. One, it, a protein would need a protuberance, as I'll explain in a second, and proteins don't have protuberances, they have crevasses. So how could how could a protein recognize a specific sequence? Uh, let's see, where's the gizmo here? It w a protein would have to. Um, so what do I press? Oh, got myself. Yeah, I killed myself. But anyway, let's try it here. Yeah, would have to. It would need a protuberance. Why? Because if the DNA is double stranded it would have, have to get, get information, information from in these grooves. And, and proteins, proteins don't, don't have things that stick in grooves. grooves. Well, that well, was the first problem, problem, and it was just simply wrong. wrong. It, it turns, turns out, out that Lambda Presser, and if I can jump ahead, thousands of <laughs> DNA, specific, specific DNA, DNA binding proteins, proteins have on their surfaces, surfaces protuberances, as Crick would say, say comprising basically an alpha helix, which sits in the major groove and reads the, the sequence, their interaction. So, the great, the great Francis was simply wrong about that. But the next problem is actually quite provocative. Let's see. I wanted to just say that uh, this, we're going to now find that there are surface elements to this little protein that make it do all these things. And that's, and that's because, because what these things, things do is, is incredibly simple, simple, too simple for most people to take seriously. But, but you know, you know whatever, whatever you like. like. Um, so, so the, the protuberance, protuberance here, the DNA, DNA binding, binding alpha, alpha helix, helix is right, right there. there. And, that and that we know, we know from, from, for example, example mutational studies that prevent DNA, DNA binding, or fancy, fancy experiments like changing the, the, the um, uh, sequence, sequence of the alpha, of the alpha helix, helix and thereby, thereby changing its specificity. specificity. This, this is, is not something that uh, anybody's, anybody's going to argue, argue about. But, but the, the more interesting, interesting question, it turns out, out and, and quite a, a uh, yeah, yeah, quite an quite interesting problem, problem, is the information, the information problem. problem. So, so it's got, got a protuberance, protuberance but, but the information, information problem. problem. So, so now what do we mean by that? We mean, let me see. Uh, yes, okay. I'm going to tell you the answer and then tell you why. It's solved by a phenomenon called cooperativity. And if, if you can think carefully about cooperativity, and I usually fail in my efforts to get people to take this seriously for all these years, you can understand a lot of how these, all the systems work in bacteria and as you'll see in, uh, in, uh, Eukaryotes. So, so what, what is, is the information, information problem? problem? I, I thought I had a picture, picture of it again. But anyway, if there's, there's an alpha helix in the major groove, that, that can at most see five base pairs, pairs by making contacts. contacts. So, so how, how could you possibly pick out a unique sequence of five base pairs amongst thousands and thousands of base pairs in a genome by just seeing five? It, 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 it wouldn't be unique, and there wouldn't, there wouldn't be enough energy. energy. And since, and since the problem, the problem is, is always specificity, specificity, you need, you need some, some trick, trick 
And so the trick turns out to be cooperativity. And the way that works is, roughly speaking, you first, uh, the repressor dimerizes and binds to a sequence which now, in which each monomer touches the DNA with its sticks and its alpha helix. So now the recognition site is twice as long. Instead of five base pairs, you have more like 10. And that's getting it to be unique, but it's not quite. So you do another step, let's just see, and you add a second dimer, so that now if all these guys are making the appropriate contacts, you're seeing something that's, whoops, you're seeing something that's 20, uh, on the order of 20 base pairs long, which is pretty unique. Now, I'll just say it. Uh, the problem of specificity never goes away because it depends on concentration. All, uh, we say that the protein binds specifically to a site if it's mean residence time, if you took snapshots every thousand a second, you'd see it here more than you'd see it other places. But you'll see it a lot of places. So, so it's, it's just, just that, that it's more, more apt to be here than somewhere else. else. And so this, yeah. yeah. And, and so, so this kind of, <coughs> the, the cooperativity, cooperativity, now is it clear how the cooperativity works? Ah, jeez. The cooperativity, for example, if this dimer were to start to fall off the DNA, this one would still hold on at any given half second. Vice versa, if this one fell off the DNA, it would still hold on because of these contacts. Together, it's like a chelating effect, except that the connection between the dimers is weak. It's only about a kilocalorie. So you're increasing... It takes one or two amino acid contacts, and the whole system of recognizing a specific sequence depends upon those kinds of interactions. And, and it can, can get, get quite, quite elaborate. elaborate. For example, in Lambda, you can have 3,000 base pairs away. Some, some of these repressors bound here, and some of these repressors bound here. And they make a loop, and touch each other, and bind cooperatively. And that's actually crucial in the regulation of, in Lambda, which I won't particularly emphasize, but we could talk about it. So now, if, the, the, if uh, these experiments were required some imagination from people in the lab, you can pick mutants that have lost the ability to bind cooperatively, but not the ability to bind at a lower affinity for a single site. And then you can, um, you can show where on the protein it is. So now we have two more surfaces with just a couple of amino acids here and a couple of amino acids here and an alpha, a protruding alpha helix here. So, so already, already this, this thing, thing is getting, getting full of surfaces. surfaces. And, and by, by the way, <coughs> uh, yeah. yeah, never mind. Now, there's, now, there's another, another, there, uh, another, another point, point that, that has, has to be made, made which is, so, so, let me just, so the, the way, way you start, start to break, break down, down the information problem, problem is, is by, by having, having multimers, multimers of, of the same, same protein, protein or of different, different proteins, proteins, if you like, like touching, touching one another and binding cooperatively. We, we say that one of these dimers, for example, helps another to bind. bind. Or if or you wish, you could say that one, one of them recruits, recruits the other. And the, the, the effect, effect is only about a factor of 10, because, because they're very weak, weak interactions. interactions. But, but the whole the system, system all, all through, you'll, you'll see, see that, that the, the world of regulation depends on those kinds of factors. Which means, by the way, that it, it depends, depends on the, on the concentration, concentration of these things. things. So, so whereas, whereas both sites, sites will be filled at a certain, certain concentration, concentration only if they can touch each other, if you, you increase the concentration, concentration of these guys by a factor of 10, they'll, they'll bind without, without touching each other. Each other. You, you lose the cooperative effect. effect. And, this and this runs through the entire world of gene regulation, regulation why it's, I think, one of the reasons it's hard for people to accept that the world works this way. I think, I think it does. It does. Now, now, so, so now we've got, got the protein that turns, turns the genes off somehow, somehow and we know, we know it binds to double-stranded double DNA, multiple, multiple sites, sites, so you have so to have reiterated sites, sites for this cooperativity to work. Now, there's, now, there's another problem. problem. This, this problem is that, that when, the, when, the, when the cells, cells divide, divide, they, they keep, keep the, the, now it's called a prophase, they keep the phase silent 
uh, in uh, forever. forever. And so, so how, how can, can that, that be? be? If you, you need, need the repressor to turn the genes, genes off, why do you, and it's, and it's yeah, yeah, why do you not, not just, just run, run out of repressor and turn the genes back on or something like that? Well, it turns out that repressor, and in fact, this is its more, perhaps, more interesting, is also an activator. It, it activates, activates transcription, transcription of its own, its own gene. gene. Now, now, the word, the word activates, activates is very misleading because, because it implies, it implies you, you have a key, key and you know, with, with energy, energy and motors and so on, and things happening. happening. But, that's but that's what it's, what it's called, called. And all, through all through the world of regulation. regulation. People, People talk, talk about, about activators. activators. We'll see another one in the ubiquitination nation case later. And so what happens is, what happens is that whatever the mechanism <laughs> for the moment, that, that the, the repressor, repressor binds, binds cooperatively to two sites, sites touching each other, other, and then it also, and then it activates RNA polymerase, uh, as, I'll, as I'll, just, I'll explain in a second, second activates transcription of its own gene, gene which, which then feeds, feeds back, back, and you have, have a positive feedback loop. loop. So the, so the end state, state you might say, of lambda, lambda differentiation into this silent state is a positive feedback loop where repressor is turning itself on. And I say repressor, because that's, that's the historical link. But, but in this context, context, it's an activator. It, it is, is indeed, indeed turning, turning off genes that would otherwise be uh, uh, read, read to the right, right here. here. But, but for the, the purposes, purposes of understanding, understanding how it maintains its own, maintains the, the system, system you, you, you have to invoke this effect, effect which, which is, is, I'll explain in a second, which is activation so that, that there's, there's a constant, constant supply of repressor. Let, Let me just say, because I didn't put the slide in, but for those of you who think about these things, whenever you have a positive feedback loop, you're always in danger. Because as you divide, if the concentration of repressor got too low, you would lose the loop, and you can't get it back. And so there. We can, we can talk, talk about, about that tomorrow. But, but so, so there's, there's another, another factor here, which is the repressor negatively. There's a negative feedback loop superimposed on this, which keeps the repressor concentration within a quite strict range. But so you can do very sophisticated things. And it turns out that at the heart of activation is the world's simplest reaction. It's the same thing as cooperative binding. It's a weak protein-protein interaction between the bound repressor and RNA polymerase. And so, and by the way, how do we know that? Well, various ways, but for one thing, we know this rule that you can separate the DNA by, the best bet was that when you bound to DNA, did something fancy to the DNA, and that would make polymerase come to the promoter more often. But that's not true. It doesn't have any effect on DNA. It just sits there. But if it has the right surface structure, surface amino acids, acids it, it contacts, contacts polymerase, polymerase trying, trying to bind next door, door. And, and just, just as, as in cooperative binding, binding increases the frequency with which, in this case, polymerase binds. binds. And, this and this we know from lots of ways. ways. Uh, the, uh, again, again, the simple, simple the really, really insightful, insightful genetic, genetic experiment, experiment uh, was, was to show that you can, can isolate a mutant, a positive control mutant, it was called, that, that binds DNA normally but it, but it can't can activate, activate transcription. transcription. And you ask, and that's, and that's in a separate, separate part of the repressor, that activating region, than the DNA binding region, as I'll show you in a second. So, so let's, let's just see how it works. works. It's, it's just, just <coughs> polymerase on its, on its own will bind, bind with a certain frequency to the promoter. promoter. But, but now, now if, if you're next, next to an operator site, site, as it's called, where repressor binds, and repressor contacts polymerase, then, then it, it will stabilize, stabilize and thereby increase, increase the frequency with which polymerase binds, binds and activates the gene. gene. So, so cooperativity is, is so, so gene, gene activation, activation, so an activator is not, doesn't, doesn't activate anything. anything. It doesn't it activate, activate the enzyme. enzyme. It doesn't, doesn't activate, activate. Yeah. yeah. And this, this actually goes through all of gene regulation, this problem of using words like activator, and so people assume they, what, what they should look for, but it's not that at all. It's the sim world's simplest reaction, reaction, a simple binding reaction that, that increases, increases the affinity of, essentially, of the 
increases the residency time of polymerase because it's contacting not only the DNA, but also the uh, a few amino acids on the repressor, which <laughs> are contacting its activating region. Is that clear? No one's going to argue about that? OK, so I said that these bacterial systems have activators and repressors. So why do we need a repressor? And what would it do? Well, the answer is found in thinking about what happens if you don't have an activator. And that's shown here. You, you have what's called a, uh, let me see. Why can't I figure this out? Hmm. Uh, that thing? No. All right. Huh, it's gone dead. So where's the man? I think you need a battery or something. Um, OK, let's just go like this. So, so in, the in the absence, absence of, of any regulator, regulator for example, in the in absence, absence of, of, oh, you switched, switched it on, on. That, that was a trick. trick. <laughs> By the way, I, 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 I sort, sort of knew it before, before but I was delighted on our tour today to remember, remember that I had a great company, company in Mendel and, and Darwin. Darwin, the three of us are real path, because None, None of us, of us could, could bear, bear going, going to medical, medical school, school, so it's, <laughs> it's a common thing. Anyway, um, yeah, so now, okay, so this should, yeah. So let's say you have no activator, and the RNA polymerase is going to bind to this because it has a certain affinity for this sequence. And in fact, as I said, the activation contact is only about a factor of 10. So that, so that means that in the absence of an activator, activator there's going to be a basal level, a spontaneous level, about tenfold ten lower. In fact, fact you know, um, truth to tell, gene, gene regulation, regulation is an add-on. <laughs> if you get, get rid of all these regulators, regulators things work. work. They, they just, just don't work, work as well. well. So, for, you know, so. So, so the, the problem, problem in this case, case because the way the activator works, works is that you you have, have this basal, basal expression. expression. And, and so, so to get, get rid, rid of that, that which would otherwise make a mess if you start, is this. this. There's, There's a repressor, a repressor that, that binds and occludes the promoter. the promoter. It's called an operator, but it doesn't matter. But that's how I'm defining a repressor. It's a classical example. So if the repressor is there, no activator can work, no polymerase can bind, the gene is totally off. So, so in bacteria, bacteria what, what you, you do is you have a sort of intermediate state, state, if you want to say that. Now, if you add a repressor, you turn the, the basal level way down. And if you add an activator, you go up here so that the combined effect is a huge factor of induction. There's no energy. It's just no ATP. It's just two different binding reactions. And you get this huge effect. Now, we'll see why that's, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see, see how, how that, that changes, changes in eukaryotes, eukaryotes to good effect. effect. But, but just, just for those of you who might be a little, by, be wondering, wondering it, it, this, this kind of thing, thing where you have, have to turn, turn, you have to turn, turn the thing off, off as well as, well as not, not turn, turn it on, leads to a lot of complications. And in fact, Lambda as a model for how the world works was uh, misleading in the first case, let's say, because it turned because there's a double net. There's a, There's a negative, negative aspect. aspect. In other words, the first gene that is transcribed here when, when this, this is taken, taken away is a repressor, repressor that turns off the repressor gene. gene. So, so it, seems it seems like that's, that's all very fancy and, and makes, makes sense, sense, but it doesn't, it doesn't really, really, unless you realize <laughs> that the, the reason, reason it's repressing is because even if you've taken the repressor away, there will be a significant level, basal level of transcription. Does that, Does that make, make any sense? sense? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So, so lambda is this huge artifact. artifact. Uh, uh, and, and when all is said and done, done it's, it's the world's simplest, simplest protein, protein, and it, it just, just has, has some, some interesting surfaces. surfaces. It has a DNA, DNA binding, binding with a protrusion. protrusion. It has it an has activating an region, region, which is, that's what we call it, with just a few amino acids that touches the appropriate amino acids on RNA polymerase. polymerase. 
And you, know, you can, can imagine, imagine, if you, you change, change the amino acids on RNA polymerase, you could then have to change the activating region. region. And, and a lot of activators work this way. They just touch different parts of polymerase. And perhaps, and perhaps the most important conceptual point, and I don't have a slide here, is, is that you can eliminate, eliminate the activating region entirely and just make a bridge between repressor and polymerase. It's totally artificial, and you get fine activation. In other words, nothing there's, no, There's nothing special about the interaction between the repressor and the polymerase. It's just a contact, and any contact will do, so long as it doesn't screw things up. Lots of different contacts will do, and all you're doing is increasing the frequency with which polymerase binds, which is, in other words, a way of saying you have cooperative binding. So now, if you, and following what I said before, if you increase the polymerase concentration tenfold, the, it wouldn't need the activation. It would already be high right. if there were no repressors there, right? right? So, all so all these effects, effects depend on concentration. concentration. And so, so just to get, get people annoyed, I'll tell you, around my, my neck of the woods, this drives people crazy. crazy. But, but I, think I think that's, that's why, why they have so much trouble with cancer. cancer. Things, Things are, are overproduced, overproduced and, and you, you get, get oh, I'll come back to that. Okay, okay. Now, now there's one other point to make that has general, that would obviously occur to you. How, How do you establish, establish a feedback, feedback loop, loop in the first place? Because you, you, you start, start out with no repressor, repressor something happens and you start, start making repressor, which then works by a positive feedback loop. loop. And, and the, the answer, answer is that the development, development of lambda, lambda to get to this stage goes, goes through, through two well-described well stages. stages. One, One is called establishment, establishment and the, the other is called maintenance. And so during the establishment phase, you have a big huff and a puff of various genes turning on turning off, all by the principles we've already described for how activators work and so on. And you end up making some of this stuff repressor, which then feeds back, turns off the bad guys, and turns itself on. So you've got a positive feedback loop at that point. OK. I think OK. Uh, now, we're going to go on to eukaryote. So are there any, yes, anything that's weird? You know all this? Probably. She, she does. does. Okay. okay. When you when get you to get eukaryotes, eukaryotes, there are two, two major problems, problems right off the bat. The first, the first thing, thing is that the DNA is wrapped in these things called nucleosomes, and that's caused a lot of hysteria. And, and there's, there's a much, much more complicated transcriptional machinery. It's not just a little old polymerase. So, so all, all the DNA is wrapped, wrapped in these things, things every 150 base pairs. And it's a sad fact, fact but, but uh, people, people use, use their, their intuitions, intuitions and their intuitions are always wrong. They, they look, look and they see, ah, it's wrapped in nucleosomes. That's, that's an impenetrable barrier. And so how are you going to deal with that? that? Well, well, you have, you have to, to, somebody, somebody has, has to, to uh, uh, is, OK, the fact, the fact is, is DNA is wrapped, is wrapped in nucleosomes. nucleosomes. The, second the second fact is, is that, that, as I said, the machinery is wildly complicated compared, compared to, to what, what you need to transcribe, transcribe a gene. It might, might be 100 proteins. proteins. I don't know. There are people who study this sort of thing. So I give you another one of my favorite uh, sayings about science. Science, science discovers things, things that, that furnish the basis again and again for further discoveries. discoveries. It could, could be otherwise. <laughs> it's that <laughs> last phrase that I love. Could, could be otherwise. So, so what do we know, know if we're going to start to analyze what goes on in eukaryotes faced with these new difficulties? Well, this, this is meant to be a review. It might look a little intimidating, but very quickly, it's everything I've said. You bind a double-stranded DNA using a protuberance. You, you, make, um, you, you bind specifically thanks to reiterated sites on the DNA and cooperativity touching between the proteins. You, um, the way an activator works is by re Sell. Uh, I turn it off, but I'm never quite sure how I can do that. These, the new phones are so fucking complicated. Okay, a the actor, the, an activator works by recruitment, which is a form of cooperativity, we said. A repressor binding to a operator will work, work by, by exclusion, exclusion that's, that's obvious. obvious. And, and once, once a repressor, repressor is there, you can't, can't activate the gene unless, unless you take the repressor off. off. And you, and you have, have two phases, phases to development, establishment and maintenance. maintenance. 
the establishment's complicated maintenance is a positive feedback loop. So do any of these ideas do us any good? Well, we go, fortunately, to yeast, because yeast have exactly those properties I just discussed about eukaryotes. All the DNA is wrapped in nucleosomes, and the transcriptional machinery is way weirdly complicated. So we turned our attention to, uh, thanks to others who had laid the groundwork, there are these genes called the gal genes. They're responsible for uh, eating galactose. And there's a protein, a regulatory protein, that is called GAL4. And if you mutate that protein, disappear it, the genes don't come on as though it's a repressor. They go off. They, 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 you can't turn them on. So GAL4 met the obvious genetic definition of a activator. Uh, then it turns out that GAL4 is a universal activator. So if you take its binding sites, which are reiterated sites called UASG, upstream activating sequence galactose, and put it in all kinds of organisms, human cells, plants, um, flies, worms, it activates perfectly well. So there's nothing special about yeast. So anything we can find out about how GAL4 is made and works should be of general consequence. Yes? yes. And, and so, so here, here is, is, in fact, fact uh, what, what goes, goes on. on. When, when the genes are off, off there's, there's this thing that has four binding sites, sites for GAL4. GAL4. Each of binds a GAL4 dimer, dimer turns, turns out. And, and the, the, the uh, activating, activating region, region uh, well, the, the, the protein, protein is complex with another protein, protein an inhibitor, inhibitor called GAL80. GAL80. Gal80, I'll just say, is, it turns out, is covering the eukaryotic activating region. It's on Gal4. We'll see in a minute. So that's the situation in raffinose. And now, note that there are nucleosomes here. And these nucleosomes obviously do not pr prevent um, uh, gene activation because if you add Galactose, which takes off the inhibitor. I'll show you what happens in a second. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you in the next slide. If you uh, add galactose, you remove the inhibitor. And now, I'm not showing this here, but GAL4 recruits the transcriptional machinery. These nucleosomes, and you can follow this in time if you want, all fall off over time and are, re are replaced, are kicked off by the recruited transcriptional machinery. But the important point is that um, there are no, there's no repressor here. The gene is, in the absence of galactose, the gene is totally off. And it took years of studying the gal genes until one day we realized, well, this is kind of weird. But it's true. There are talk about repressors, something called MI, but it's not, they're not relevant. So, so when, nowadays, nowadays, of course, you can use PCR, PCR and you can and ask, is there a basal, basal level like you'd expect in bacteria? And the answer is no. So, so now, now let's, let's just, just... Yes. yes, and, and so, so I'll, I'll just tell you the punchline. Punch you, you probably get this already. That, that these, these nucleosomes, nucleosomes which are bound... It's another thing that people say so much nonsense about nucleosomes. Nucleosomes bind with an affinity, just like a DNA binding protein to regions of DNA where the higher the, a, the, the, higher the GC content, the tighter the binding. These regions are relatively AT rich, and so, but they're enough so that you can't get basal transcription, right? They put a barrier up that's not so high you can't remove them and activate the gene, but it's high enough so that the Basal, basal transcription, transcription which, which would occur, occur by just spontaneous, spontaneous binding of all these gizmos, gizmos including polymerase, simply, simply doesn't, doesn't happen, happen, or to the measurement doesn't happen. happen. And it's not it's hard, hard, I mean, you know, there are many, many experiments showing that if you, you mess up the nucleosomes, you start, you start to get basal transcription, transcription all over the place. place. So, so that's, that's so. so. So, so in the, the absence of galactose, galactose the gene is totally off. off. All, All you, you need, need is an activator. activator. And, that's and that's thanks, thanks to nucleosomes, nucleosomes 
which bacteria don't have. So I've always said nucleosomes are a waste of time, they're just like salt. Well, they are just like salt in a sense, but they're not a waste of time because they make possible activator only regulation, and I'll, and I'll say, say why that's, that's important. important. Okay, okay, so going, going on to another idea we have from bacteria, bacteria. remember, remember that, that in bacteria, bacteria we have, we have a, a protuberance, which is an alpha helix, helix separated, separated from, from an activating, activating region. region. And, and the, the purpose, purpose of DNA, DNA binding is to position the alpha helix on DNA, to position Sorry, the activating region on DNA so it can activate a nearby gene. Now, in yeast, it turns out to be much easier to show this. I think even Keegan was one of the important people in showing this, right? <laughs> you can put it at a lot of places near a gene, and it works. And so why is that? Well, here we go. We don't have to do really complicated genetics and, and so on and so forth. We just have to note that GAL4 is a large protein. How big is it? 100? 980-something amino acids, and, and it's, it's got, got a couple, couple little guys, guys down, down here which bind to DNA, DNA if you just, just cut, cut off all, all this other stuff. stuff. But, but they, it, when, you when you bind to DNA, DNA you can't, can't activate. activate. So, so it's, it's got, got a DNA, DNA binding. binding. Now, this, now, this DNA, DNA binding, binding region is, is not, not exactly like, like that we find in laminar repressor. It's something called a zinc cluster, cluster right? right? But it's, it's the same, same idea. idea. You, you stick, stick an alpha helix in the major groove, and, and you, you read the thing, thing and you have multiple sites, sites and it's all the same, same principles. There's a lot of different, different <coughs> uh, ways, ways of doing it, it all to the same, same end. end. Now, now, if you, you ask, ask, well, what does that thing on top do, the other half of the protein here, without a DNA binding domain, it does nothing. But, but if you, if you stick, stick it on, on DNA, DNA, even, even using, using a bacterial, bacterial DNA, DNA binding domain, domain this is called a DNA, DNA binding domain swap, if, if there, there are sites for the, for the Lex, Lex DNA, DNA, this, this is, is a bacterial, bacterial DNA, DNA binding domain, domain that, that thing, thing activates. activates. So in other words, it's just as if what happens in bacteria is repeated in eukaryotes in a, in a messier, messier way, so it's easier to analyze. You have, you have one, one bit of the protein, protein that binds DNA, DNA using, using the same, same rule about alpha helices and so, and so on. And another, and another part, part of the protein, protein that's, that's, that's called its activating, activating region. region. The activating, activating region has, has to be stuck on DNA, DNA to work. work. Why? Because, because activation, activation works by recruitment. recruitment. If you just it's have an activating, an activating region, region floating around, around you, can't you can't recruit anything to any... You can't recruit the... Is that clear? Um, yeah, yeah, so, so in fact, fact, it turns, turns out that, that making, making a eukaryotic activator is the simplest thing in the world, the world with stuff around the kitchen. kitchen. You, you can make, make what seems, seems like a magical protein. protein. It's simply it's a DNA, DNA binding, binding domain, domain. And, and it, it turns, turns out, out any of a lot of different sequences work as activating regions. And that's a very interesting thing. That It's too hard to study, so most people have forgotten about it by now. But these sequences apparently are disordered, and they... Somehow, Somehow, they, they touch, touch various, various bits, bits of the, the transcription machine there and recruit them. them. Um, and, and don't, don't lose sight of the elementary, elementary fact that, that if you, you take, take one of these proteins, proteins whatever, whatever its binding, its binding site, site is, and the binding, binding site is moved in front of any other gene, gene in any other organism, organism may or may, may not, not be strictly true, true but to the extent that it's tested, tested it activates that gene. So you can see how... Evolution, evolution had no, had no problem, problem changing regulatory circuits because, because any activator can work on any gene, gene and it's just a question of where it sits. DNA binding is simply a location, a specificity determinant. So if we now go back to what we saw with lambda repressor, we had an activating region and a DNA binding region which were separate, and now with GAL4, they're, uh, they happen to be on the same domain, in the, in the case, case of Lambda, lambda which made it harder, harder to figure out, out and had to use these genetics and so on, whereas GAL4, they're, they're on separate domains. domains. So, so it's easy to show because you can just chop them off. And, and so, so wherever you put the GAL4 binding, binding sites in front, in front of a gene, gene they, they touch, touch various, various aspects, aspects of the machinery, machinery recruit it, and you get... That, by the way, is the... It's funny what... That's, That's why, why the two-hybrid two system, system works, works right? right? 
So if you have a, a protein with an activating region on it, and it's floating around, it doesn't do anything. But now, if you can stick something on DNA that interacts with that protein, you turn a gene on. That's because the activating region is now on the, associated with the DNA, and it can recruit the... Is that clear? You all know about the two hybrid systems? Okay. You know about Mendel's peas and hackweed and all that. All right. So now, I just want to give the punchline. So, the, 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 the big deal about um, the logic. Yeah, I already said this. And I've said that nucleosomes prevent basal but not activated transcription. Is that clear? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you have activators only in eukaryotes, and what's the advantage of that? Well, the first advantage is, that the same gene can be turned on by different activators or enhancers. So for example, here's gene, whatever it is, and it's activated by enhancer B, which is a collection of activators, and as you probably know, it can be thousands of base pairs away. But now, to turn that gene off, all what you must do is inhibit the acti or remove the activators on the enhancer. If, if you, you did, did it the way bacteria, bacteria do it, where, where which is to sequester the promoter, the promoter you can't, can't get, get at the promoter, promoter nobody, nobody could activate it. it. That's, That's the point of a real repressor. repressor. So you don't, you don't have, have repressors. repressors. All, All you have are these nucleosomes, nucleosomes that form everywhere, everywhere and, prevent and prevent this low energy, energy event of basal, basal transcription, but not, not the higher energy event of activation. So in this case, the gene is activated from one enhancer at one time, and another, another enhancer, enhancer another. another. And, these and these enhancers, enhancers are um, easily, easily assayed, assayed now. For example, uh, here's, here's the, the uh, kit, kit gene, the murine kit, kit gene. gene. In a myeloid, myeloid cell, cell, you can see it's, it's totally off, off and, there's and there's no enhancer. No enhancer. In, in mast, mast cells, it's, it's on un, like gangbusters, and there's an enhancer here, here which, which we knew from the previous deletion experiments was the key region. In just tumors, tumors, there is no uh, enhancer. Uh, enhancer here, there's, there's an enhancer, enhancer a separate, separate enhancer, enhancer out here. here. So, so you never have, have to worry. worry. Got it? You couldn't, you couldn't do, do this, this with a bacterial system. system. That's, That's why, why I say it's the secret, secret to life, you accept that, that right? right? The, second the second point is, is the differentiated state is simplified. Is simplified. All, All you need is a positive, positive feedback, feedback loop. loop. Now, no, you know, <laughs> Maybe, Maybe this, this will not always, always turn, turn out, out to be true, true but, but here's, here's a typical, a typical picture, picture of what happens during differentiation, differentiation of anything. anything. <laughs> a worm neuron, neuron or something. And all this stuff and happening looks like, I always say, it looks like a, like a hundred lambdas. lambdas. But what, what happens, happens at the end of all that? that? Well, well, as, as shown by Hobart for worm sensory neurons, and this is now found in many, many cases, you produce an activator that binds, binds to, to an enhancer, an enhancer. and again, again, this is easy to do in eukaryotes. You have you something that binds to an enhancer, it can be anywhere, anywhere along here, here, and it and will it activate the gene. gene. Now, now, if the gene is key, key one, for example, the key, key one is an activator, activator that goes and turns on the various good guys, guys you want, and, and keeps keep itself on by a positive feedback loop. And there are two things, you know, you don't need to worry about turning off all the thousands of other genes. They're just, They're just off. off. And, and the great, great experiment, experiment was, that's been done many times in many, times many systems, systems now, now, you, you add, add something, something that will that interrupt this loop, loop even, even transiently, like, like a, a SHRNA, SHRNA or something, or something. And, and the, the differentiated cell, cell regresses, de-differentiates. De -differentiates. That's, that's, as I say, that's, that's the problem with, with feedback, positive feedback loops. If you interfere with them, you can't just get them back. You have to go through that whole horrendous process to turn, to turn on, on the right, right guy, guy, who then, so on and so forth. forth. Is, that, is, that, is that clear? clear? I, mean, I mean, it's like, like tinker, tinker toys, toys. But, but to a first, first you take, take it or leave it. it. But, but to a first, to a first approximation, approximation, that's how, that's how things, things seem to work. work. I, was I was going, going to, remind to remind you that, that in the Lambda case, you have a more complex thing. You have to turn off. Never mind. All right, maybe, maybe I, will I will say, say this, this because, because uh, uh, we're zipping, zipping along, along here. here. And, and uh, 
Somebody might have wondered, wondered well, well, how do, how do these, these DNA, DNA binding proteins, proteins get on, on, the get on, get on DNA, DNA in the first place? place. Because, because of the nucleosomes. nucleosomes. I mean, what's, what's the, the... And it turns, and it turns out, out, again, again the, the nucleosomes, nucleosomes are a big help, help not, not a hindrance. hindrance. Because, because the most of the, of the sequences, sequences are such that, that the nucleosomes present a barrier represented by this green lid. And now, and now any, any two, two proteins, proteins that, that bind, bind side by side, side will help each other. Because if one binds, binds it'll slightly, slightly pry open, open the lid, lid and the other, the other binds, binds and now you're on. on. Meaning, Meaning that, that in eukaryotes, eukaryotes any, any two, two proteins, proteins who bind next, next to each other, other within 150, 150 base pairs, will, will tend, tend to help each other's bind. In other words, bind cooperatively. This is kind of a scary thing. Because, because generations, generations of young, young workers, workers, such as some of you here, here who have slide rules or whatever you, whatever you have now, are going to try to figure out what are the rules for where proteins bind in the genome. genome. And of course, and of course if, if you follow what happens, happens as, the, as, the, as cells, cells differentiate, differentiate or de-differentiate, a, a lot of these proteins, these proteins if they don't, they don't disappear, disappear, they change, they change places. places. They're, they're changing, changing places because they're changing partners. Is that clear? So, yeah. And, and, the, and actually, actually, the nucleosomes, the nucleosomes in, that in that sense, sense help a bit, if anything. There, there are some proteins, proteins that touch, touch each other when they bind, bind cooperatively. But, but so, so one of them, them one, one kind of cooperativity of depends, depends on an interaction, interaction and, it and it only occurs, occurs between, between guys, guys who can interact. interact and the other, the other one, one occurs between anybody, anybody who's near, nearby, near somebody else. else. And experiments show this. If one of these guys... Various, various people, people have shown, shown this, that, that if this guy is a bacterial, bacterial protein, protein like Lex, Lex and this is a, a, a eukaryotic protein like something else, they, they help, help each other bind. bind. So, so that in the absence, absence of Lex, you wouldn't bind, bind this protein. protein. But they're, they're not, not touching each other, they're, they're from different, different species or whatever. My favorite, My favorite line, line in a recent movie is in Paddington 1. Have you all seen that? Great work of art. It's about a little bear. Who talks? <laughs> so anyway, and he goes to goes London. To London and, uh, and, uh, long and long story short, short Nicole, Nicole Kidman, Kidman, no one other than Nicole Kidman, Nicole Kidman herself, um, is the, the evil, evil, the wicked witch, witch who wants, wants to kill the bear and stuff him. <laughs> so when, when the, 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 the guy who's fallen, whose, whose family, family has adopted, adopted the, bear, the bear, in the climactic scene says, "But we love the bear," and she says, "You love the bear? You're not even the same species." That was a completely brilliant line. But I happen to love Nicole Kidman. So what are you going to do? Okay. okay. Uh, uh, have you had enough? Because I, you know. No. Uh, uh, do you want to hear about polycom? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So, so, to be, to be fair, fair, to be honest, to be unlike, unlike our current, current president, president, we have, we have to, to admit. admit that there, there are, are these, these things, things called repressors, repressors that really, that really see, see that are advertised, advertised as turning genes off. off. One, of One of them is, is the famous polycomb, polycomb complex. complex. It's in flies, it's, it's in people, it's so on and so forth. And this is, this is one, one of the few, few cases where you can actually, actually tell, tell what's going, going on, on, although, although the, the exact, exact mechanism, mechanism is not entirely, not entirely clear, clear, but I could. Anyway, by these certain histone modifications, H3, K27, methyl 3, and so on. So, so um, how, does how does it know where to work, and, and what does, does it do it when it's when there? there? Well, well, I noticed, I noticed that, that <laughs> reading, just glancing, just glancing at the literature, literature something, something that is, I don't I recommend, recommend particularly, particularly but, but in this case, case it was useful, because all, all these guys, guys who published, published these papers saying, saying can you can believe it? We turned a gene off with polycomb, and now we add an activator, and it turns back on. So, so what, what kind of kind repressor is that? The whole point of a repressor, repressor is to prevent an activator from working. working. Well, well, it turns, it turns out, out, so I'll so tell you what I think the answer is. is. So, so someone, someone in the lab, Georgina Brazil, studying, studying this kit locus in, 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 in um, murine, murine cells, cells mice, mice cells. cells. Um, um, I, I, I mentioned, mentioned this enhancer that's way upstream, 150 kb upstream. And I showed you the sort of whatever it is picture. So... There's, There's a, a chromosomal, chromosomal inversion, inversion that puts that, that enhancer a million, a million miles upstream. upstream. I, say I say a million miles because you can't tell. It's way, way, way upstream. And, and when, when you, you look, look, you find, you find that, that... Let me see. Let me see. What, what is this? this? 
well, yeah, yeah. You, you find that, that in, in fact, fact if the, if mass, the mass cell, cell expression, expression is one, because that's, that's the mass, mass cell enhancer, enhancer. In, myeloid in myeloid cells, cells remember, remember there was, there was no, no enhancer, and so there was no transcription. No transcription. When, this when this thing goes, goes way upstream, upstream, the transcription, the transcription drops, drops to 100 to 1,000 fold below what, what it was, was when it was closer. closer. That's, that's not too surprising. surprising. If the if thing is too far away, you know, the entropy and blah, 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 making a loop and so on, and so the activation, the actual enhancer looks identical. The proteins are bound there. It's just too far away to work. Or something, something like, like that. that. So now, so now what's, what's amusing, amusing is, is that, that in, in the, the let's see, see if you if will you believe this, this next, next slide. slide. Yeah. yeah. In, in myeloid, myeloid cells, cells, which are, which are totally, totally off, off there, there is, is no, no uh, uh, yes, yeah. myeloid, myeloid cells, cells, there, there is, is no, no polycone. polycone. In mass, in mass cells, cells where it's, where it's onto, onto a high, high level, level, there's, there's almost no polycone. No polycone. But, but when in, in this inversion, inversion where transcription, transcription is low, low now, suddenly now suddenly there's, there's polycone. polycone. So, that so that led to a series of experiments, experiments which I don't, don't want to uh, uh, go through. But the, the, if you if look, look genome-wide and you ask, what, what is the relationship between where polycone is bound and where and gene expression? The genes, the genes that are, that are on, on have, no, have polycone. no polycone. The genes, the genes that, are that are off have no polycone. polycone. But, then but then there are a lot, lot of genes which are right in the middle, middle or, or, or low, low, and they have, and they polycone. have polycone. So we, so we actually tested this, this idea, idea by, by taking, taking a case, a case where, where the gene, gene is totally off, off that, like in myeloid, myeloid cells, cells, and raising, raising it a bit using an activator I'll describe in a second. And guess what? The RNA goes up a little bit, bang, you get polycone. On the other hand, if you take a gene where it's on and you decrease that level with shRNA, you get down to a certain level, bang, polycomb appears. So polycomb is evoked by low levels of expression. I could tell you how I think it knows what genes are, but it's strictly hypothetical. But so the the likely the likely um, statement of what is happening is. That when, when you, you start, start to, to activate, activate a gene, gene, you know, you have to accumulate all these activators, activators and this and that and so on, and so, and so there will be a lot, lot of mess till you get there. there. So, so that, that mess will tend, tend to get countered by polycomb. polycomb. But once so the gene is on, on polycomb, polycomb has no effect. effect. Once, once the gene, the gene is, is totally off, off it's not it's there. there. And, and the average effect on gene is about twofold, which doesn't mean some genes, depending on the strength of the activator, couldn't be more, but that's the general flavor. Other people doing Sort of related, sort of related experiments, experiments have gotten, gotten no effect, effect but, but <laughs> it's very low, low whatever, whatever it is. It is. For, for example, in um, IPS cells, cells in, in stem cells, cells in, in what are they called? IPS cells. cells. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, There's huge a huge amount of polycomb, polycomb and a lot of genes. genes. So, what, so what happens if you take, take the polycomb away by mutating these guys? guys? And the answer the is essentially nothing. You get increases of maybe a factor of two here and there in the transcription level. Now, it's true you can't then differentiate them. So, polycomb is, in fact, this factor, factor of two might, might be important. Be important. Factors, Factors of two, of two are often, often important, important, but there's, there's no, no direct, direct large, large effect, effect of, of, and I think and it think sort of makes sense, sense. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay so, now so now I'll just, I'll just um, generalize. generalize. This, this is, is not exactly a new, new idea, idea, but since I can't, can't I can't be, can't worried, be worried about anybody who hasn't read any of our stuff. So, so let's, let's just look just at this in a different way. way. What, what is the activator, activator doing in bacteria and in eukaryotes? Same, same thing. thing. It's, not it's not activating, activating anything, anything, but what, but what it's, it's doing, doing is recruiting by binding, binding to the, the, let's say, the polymerase, the polymerase and, binding and binding to the gene, boop, boop, bringing, bringing it to the gene. So. That's another, That's another way, way of saying, saying that, that it's, it's determining, determining which, which gene, gene of all, all the genes, genes that the, that the, that the that thing could work, work on, it's, it's going, going to work, to work on. on. It determines the substrate, substrate choice, choice in that, in that sense. sense. Yes? yes? So, so put, that put that way, way you realize that that, that is, is the way, way almost all, all maybe, maybe I heard about an exception today, almost all enzymes that work on other macromolecules work. They have many, many Substrates, substrates they could, could work, work on. on. So who so do they, they decide? decide? So for so example, example uh, kinases. kinases. They can they work can on any, any whatever, whatever it is, therian or serine that's sticking out. out. 
and so on. So, so the, the answer, answer is, is, I believe, I believe goes, goes like this. Let's, let's take the ubiquination system, because that's uh, quite, clear. quite clear. So you so have, have the enzyme, enzyme called an E2, E2 which has, has all these delicious-looking delicious looking potential, potential substrates. substrates. How does it how know does it which know one to work on, and how is that regulated? Well, the answer is, you produce something called an E3. And by uh, an amusing an twist, twist of, of luck, luck those, those things, things were always, always called activators. activators. Because if you added, added one to a mix of an E2, E2 and, and, and possible, possible substrates, substrates, you go, whoop, you got a big increase in ubiquitination. ubiquitination. And so everyone, everyone called it an activator, activator and thought it was activating, activating the enzyme. But of course, all it's doing is working just like a transcriptional regular activator. It's recruiting the enzyme to a particular substrate or the, or other, the way other way around, a particular, particular protein. protein. And so and a so different, different E3 will take you to a different substrate, substrate uh, and, and so on. So on. And, it's and it's worth, worth noting, noting, just, just to, to really, really make the, the, all the arguments as general as possible, as possible. just, just as, 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 as in, in, the in the absence of an activator, activator there's, there's a background, a background level, level, a basal level, level of activity of RNA polymerase that's got to be countered somehow in a bacteria, for example. So there's, so there's always, always a, basal a basal level of activity of, activity of these enzymes, enzymes, like ubiquitinators, ubiquitinators and, so and so on. So what do you so do, what do you about, about that? that? Well, there's, well, a, there's different a different solution, solution in every case, case, I guess. But a, but a common solution, solution is to just make up, make up an enzyme, enzyme that takes, takes ubiquitin, ubiquitin off of all proteins. All proteins. It goes around, it goes around just taking them off. Them off. And, it's and it's only where it's recruited and you make a lot of it that that effect gets swamped out. So you might say there's a basal level of activity and you're constantly working to get rid of it. That's, That's one of the one reasons, of the reasons th these, regulatory these regulatory worlds are so complicated, because all, all kinds of things, things can... can... Uh, uh, yes? yes? You agree? You agree? Not going to argue, argue about, about it? it? Ugh, coward. coward. Uh, uh, and, so and so now, so now I, guess I guess I should, I should just go back to, to <laughs> this thing I mentioned, I mentioned before. before. It's a, it's a curiosity. curiosity. I know everyone, I know everyone here is hysterical about RNA, so I put it to you. Why doesn't the world work this way? We, we thought, thought that, that so, so, so here's, here's a, a, an, activator. an activator. It's got it's a got specificity, specificity determinant, determinant, which takes it to the right, right gene, and, and an activating region, region which contacts the polymerase in bacteria and the, the mess in, in, in eukaryotes. So here's, so here's a guy, a guy who works, works as an activator, activator but, actually, but actually, it's, it's not, not very good, good. but you but can get it to work. So this is a guide RNA from the CRISPR system. And Cas9, and Cas9 which, which ordinarily is, is the enzyme, so you inactivate, inactivate the, uh, the, enzyme the enzyme and you stick, stick on, on these activating, activating regions cut off from GAL4 or, or that are made up, up easy, to easy to get activating, activating regions, regions, easiest thing, thing in the world. In the world. And, that and that thing will activate, activate specific, specific, that, that specific, specific gene, gene to which, which the guide RNA, RNA is. is. It's not it's a very big effect, but it's good enough. That in And so I don't know, I find it quite curious that no activator, no activator has ever been, been discovered, discovered amongst the thousands, thousands of activators, activators in bacteria and eukaryotes that work, that work this way. way. The specificity, specificity determinant is always a protein, protein that, recognize, that recognize, despite despite crick, crick, recognizes, despite recognizes specific, specific sequences, sequences and double-stranded double DNA and doesn't, and doesn't use this obvious method of RNA, RNA which, which would just pair up. I don't know why. I think you guys who keep telling me how great RNA is have to face up to this. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's call, call it a day. day. Thank you. Thank you.
between worms and mice and all these things. So uh, you don't trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what development is. I think it's something all of the, the odd thing is that you know people in fact I recently you know some guy says well the regulators that are acting on the biology itself that are acting on all these pathogens that activated the regulators are not present in the final study and therefore there's magic and you start talking about phony stuff. Mm -hmm. But of course that's not true. The whole point is to let the government have as much as that possible to keep them from it. And it's not all these people that really get they're not supposed to and they were mentioned this earlier and they So is that so thing that like thing MyOD, like my will it get you get there you in there one, one step, step if you overexpress it? it? So that so key one. Well, it depends what you mean by definite. Because, as I understand it, like each sensory neuron is different from every other one in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So this one aspect that's turned on and turned off. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah, I the guess master, the master regulator, regulator is not, is not most, people most people think now it'll take three or four, or four major, major regulators, regulators to, make to make cell types, types rather, rather than, than one, one. Because, because we have we a good have example of that. But well, but <laughs> well, the IPS, the IPS things, things they either, either kick, kick off, off a process, process or, or well, well enough, enough, they're not they're the final, the final yeah, so you take X number of things to kick start it, four, yeah. 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 They can activate each other and they can get to what's called conflict level, but it's nothing mysterious really. Yeah, and yeah, Myodeo my would, would, would do that itself before. before. But there but there, there just there aren't just many, many examples, examples yet where, where one, one or, or even, even a small, small number, number of, of yeah. 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 <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, other uh, other questions? questions? Must be. Yeah? Yeah? Whoever. Whoever. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, uh, suggested you suggested that, that nucleosomes, nucleosomes are not are really not a barrier, barrier for, for transcription. transcription. Yeah. Okay. okay, nucleosomes, nucleosomes are, are not a barrier. barrier. They, they are, are no, no not a problem, problem for the transcription. the transcription. They are not, they are not influencing, influencing the transcription. The transcription. So, so, okay. Okay. so, so how do, how do, how do you how think, think is the, is the for example, example uh, heterochromatin, heterochromatin or, or generally, generally chromatin, chromatin structure, structure influencing the transcription? Thank you. Thank you. Did, you didn't hear anything I said? <laughs> That's what That's Keegan, what Keegan used, to used to say every say. time I tell him what an idiot it was. So anyway. So anyway um, um, yeah. yeah. <sighs> what was I about to say? Long ago, Henikoff, Henikoff, Henikoff who's a big time, a big time was, was a big time, big time chromatin, chromatin and heterochromatin and guy, guy, showed that showed if you that put Gal4 in, in the darkest, in the darkest regions, regions of Drosophila heterochromatin, it activates. So I don't know, there might be some barrier, but it's not like, you know, it's this wall, because how would you get them off? 
And so what so people, people you'll find, find, if you listen, you listen carefully, carefully, you'll find many, many people, people making, making statements, statements like this. Like the, proteins the proteins bind, bind to nucleosome-free nucleosome regions. regions. How would the How regions would the know to be nucleosome-free? Nucleosome free? They're, They're nucleosome-free nucleosome free because, because the, the DNA binding, binding proteins, proteins, have proteins have competed them off. Them off. Of course they're nucleosome-free, otherwise the proteins couldn't be there. But they're nucleosome-free, not before the protein binds, but you see what I mean? It's funny, just a simple thing like that. And people get their brains completely mushed. I can see you're not happy with this. Ask me another one. Well, look, if you were an average citizen at the Mendel Institute or something, and someone told you, well, the whole world works by these weak interactions and binding and cooperativity and so on and so forth, and, and or, or you can just, you can just look, look in a microscope, in a microscope and you see, you see uh, 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 chromatin, chromatin modifications, modifications none, of none of which have ever been shown to do anything, anything with a possible exception of HCK27. None. none. I mean, every time, every time you delete, time you delete one, one, it has no effect. Has no effect. And so, and, so, and I, I point I, I you, point by you the way, to this to recent this paper by, by um, what's her name? The Polish lady. Rosaka. <laughs> she is a real, real forces of darkness, of darkness person. person. Everything, Everything goes, goes by these mysterious things. things. And somehow, and somehow she, got she got religion. It might have been something I said to her. I don't know. But anyway, because anyway, she went out she crying. Went so anyway, so she comes back. She's, she's just published, published this beautiful, this beautiful paper, paper showing, showing that, that one, one of the crucial enzymes doing histone methylation. Everyone knows if you knock that enzyme out, it's harder to activate a gene. So what she did was just knock out the active site. And guess what? The protein, the protein is still, is still required, required, but not the, but methylation. Not the methylation. The same thing the same is true, true with uh, the, uh, the famous, famous GCN5 experiment, experiment. The, the, the first thing, first thing which was an which acetylation was thing. thing. Yeah, the, yeah, protein's, the protein's required, is required to a certain to extent because it's part of the mediator. Part of the mediator. But if you knock if you out knock the out active the site active and do the experiment do the properly, there's no effect. So my suspicion is that in a lot of these cases, think about this, and in fact some have been proved to be this, but not all. Histones, histones which have, which have always, always throughout, throughout history, history were biochemists were biochemist trying to figure out how can I assay this enzyme. enzyme. They, use they use histones, histones because they're universal, they're universal receptors. receptors. They like, they to, like get to get modified. modified. I don't know why. Something. Okay? Something. okay? okay. So, it so it could be that, be that a lot of the, lot of the stuff that you see is accidental. There's no function. And I mean, it has a function, but it's not what you're observing. It's something else. Think about that. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I just want to follow up maybe on the same sort of line of thinking uh, is that there's this phenomenon that has been published that uh, when reprogram, uh, reprogramming uh, stem cells, uh, it helps a lot or it makes the, the process more effective if you actually inhibit this histone deacetylases. So you in this sort of global hyperacetylation. Okay, the first, first thing that has to get into which people, which don't, people want don't want to accept, accept is, that is that the Vinyamanaka, Vinyamanaka factors, factors, which do which reprogramming, do reprogramming they're, they're specific, specific DNA binding, DNA binding transcription, transcription factors. factors. Now, I don't know now, why don't the, know conversation why the conversation doesn't end there. End there. Okay. Okay. okay, so then you so do, then do an, experiment an experiment where you, where knock, you out knock out certain, certain quote-unquote histone acetylases and deacetylases, and you get an effect this way or that way. I mean, I don't know. It may be affecting totally other substrates, and that has some effect on how the whole thing works. But, but if you if were you serious, serious about chromatin, about chromatin if you were if you seriously examining, examining what you what think, you would, you would never, never have predicted, have predicted the Yamanaka experiment. experiment. That, should, that have should have just eliminated, eliminated that, that aspect, aspect of thought. Of but, thought. You know, people, yeah, people ignore it. Ignore it. So is there any so idea why, you, why do we have do we all have this histone modification? No, I don't. I actually, I actually don't. don't. And I, I think I'd go so far as to say if it weren't dangerous, I'd say it's quite interesting. But, but nobody, nobody who, works who works on them, on them except, except by Saka, and, 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 and actually Shalotfer did a similar experiment, did a similar experiment. And, actually, and actually, what's his name, what's his name? Um, did the GCN5 did the GCN experiment. Most of these, guys, of these who guys, guys who work on this stuff don't want to ask, ask these, these questions. questions. So you're never so going to find out. Find they, out. They just, you know, well, it must do this, it must do that. I can tell you that if you look at our kid enhancer, and you look where GATA binds, which is a... Um, uh, so, so it's amazing, it's amazing actually, actually if, if you, if you make, make a trough because the nucleosomes, the nucleosomes didn't get displaced, get displaced uh, a nucleosome or two right there, right there. The, the, trough the trough is surrounded, is surrounded by, by what looks like a trough on a graph. It's surrounded by nucleosomes, by nucleosomes that, have that have two modifications. modifications. I always forget I always what forget. they are. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's absolutely, it's certainly not there before the protein binds. And 
you know, the, yeah, the, the problem from the, the beginning with all this stuff, stuff is that they have no they have specificity. specificity. There are two things. Two things. You could say, you well, could say, okay, well, they're okay, they're non-specific. They can't tell, they can't one, tell gene one gene from another. From another. Well, well, hmm. Hmm. But maybe but once maybe they're once there, they're, they're, perpetuating they're perpetuating their form of memory. memory. Every, Every experiment, experiment that's done seriously to test that idea gives the opposite answer. They just go away. In a normal cell, that's what you'd expect. So it's like a, I don't know. In my view, my it's, view like, it's a, like, a, uh, like a disease. Like a disease. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, OK. okay. I, don't I don't have any, have any objections. objections. I don't have anything, I don't have anything to, say to say about DNA methylation, DNA methylation eukaryotes, because it, it drives me crazy. crazy. So, I don't, so know. I don't know. I mean, in I mean, bacteria, there, there's, there, methylation there's methylation that's self-perpetuating. Self we, exactly we know exactly what it does. What it does. It's, it's a different kind of methylation. It has to do with host modification. And it's a, and different, it's a different base. base. Yeah, you, must you must know which one. one. I, don't I don't remember. Something five, something, five, something six, six, blah, blah. It's totally, it's totally different. different. So, whenever so whenever people do the DNA methylation, DNA methylation thing seriously, thing seriously I, don't I don't know. Genes get, Genes turned. get turned. If you look, if you here's look, one of those here's things. One of those if you things. look in, you look in cell, lines, cell lines, there's a huge, huge amount of methylation. Because, of course, a lot of genes are often they're sitting there for a long time, and they tend to get methylated. So you think, ah, that But whenever you find a methylated gene in an ordinary cell and you try to activate it, it's fine. So I don't, I just don't know. It probably has to do with the ALA repeats and all that stuff. I think it's very interesting. There is a paper. Ah, here's a blow for There's a very, so I'm told by my guy who can actually understand this stuff. Where they looked where at they looked patterns, patterns of methylation, of methylation in, brain in brain tumors. And amazingly, and amazingly enough, enough, you could you tell, tell by the by patterns, patterns and by these fancy these statistical, statistical classifications, classifications and blah, 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 you could you tell could what tell kind what of tumor, tumor it was. was. And in fact, and in fact they, they, even they even predicted an unknown an correctly. correctly. They're random, they're, random, they're all over they're the place, place, but, but <laughs> you know, you know, one tumor one is not tumor identical, is identical to another. To another. That's, That's very interesting. But what it means in terms of function, terms of function I, I don't know. And, and what's a little, what's depressing, a little depressing is that it seems very few, very few people want to really, want find, really out. find out. I mean, do you have any, do you have any idea, idea how many, many <laughs> registered <laughs> lives were, were, were spent? Were if only Liam had actually put in some effort. You have no idea what we'd be. But, you know, it only, it only all became, became believable, believable when we when knew we enough, enough so that, so that anything, anything that, happened, that happened, we could predict, we could predict that, it that, that it would have an effect somewhere else, somewhere else and go back and, go check. Back and check. As soon as you as start working on your carryouts, you're in you this maze of, you know, God knows what's going on. And anyway, just keep in mind that worms and flies, from which we have learned most of what we know about development, don't have DNA methylation. Yes, Adrian Bird is not very fond of flies. <laughs> he takes it personally that they don't have DNA methylation. I can imagine. Um, I don't, do we have time for one more question, or will we wrap it up? Somebody show massive. I don't, I don't, I don't think this man is happy here, so I'm sorry. You can talk afterwards. Um, okay, thank you very much, Mark. That's great. And uh, it's been a pleasure.